Google, IBM, and NASA collaborate to make a revolutionary quantum computer. Is there something that has revolutionized our world? Does any technology promise to create a new way to encrypt information and process data? Do you know the miracles of quantum physics? If you know that, tell me in the comments. Quantum physics has already changed our lives because everything we use today is an example of quantum physics in action. The world is on the edge of a second quantum revolution, which is quantum computing. So welcome to the Techverse, you all. We are back with another interesting video. Here today, we are going to tell you about Google, IBM, and NASA's collaboration to make a revolutionary quantum computer. This new technology could change everything. Let's get into the video right away. We know the magic of quantum computing. It can change the world, it can transform medicine, revolutionize communications, break in corruption, and reform artificial intelligence. Supercomputers can only analyze the most basic molecules and also take a lot of time on the other hand. Quantum computers operate using the same quantum physics properties as the molecule they are trying to stimulate. They should not have a problem handling even the most complicated reactions. Using quantum computers to simulate quantum chemistry could be far more efficient than using the fastest classical supercomputer today that could mean more efficient products, from new materials for batteries and the electric cars to better and cheaper drugs and vastly improved solar panels. Scientists hope that quantum stimulation could even find a cure for Alzheimer's that will be a breakthrough in the world of science. And research companies like Google, IBM, and NASA are building reliable quantum computers. The Turing machine was proposed by Alan Turing in 1936, and it became the foundational reference point for computing and computer theories. Conrad Zuse invented the Z1 computer at about the same time, which is regarded as the first electromagnetic binary computer. What occurred next is history, and computers are now widespread in our world. Our lifestyles have changed tremendously since the end of the 20th century, and our smartphones now have far more powerful CPUs than desktop computers did only a few years ago. The Internet of Things, or IoT, has brought computer power into every aspect of our lives. The Internet has had such a profound impact on society that many individuals can't recall a time when they weren't online. The discovery of silicon and its usage in the manufacturing of excellent transistors was a crucial trigger for this transition. This occurred over a 100-year span, beginning with Michael Faraday's discovery of the semiconductor effect in 1833 and continuing through Morris Tannenbaum's development of the first silicone transistor at Bell Labs in 1954 to the first integrated circuit in 1960. In our effort to construct this next-generation computer, we are about to go on a similar trip. IBM Quantum leads the world in quantum computing. This nascent technology is widely expected to solve valuable problems that today's most powerful classical supercomputers cannot solve and never will. With the largest fleet of 20-plus of the most powerful quantum systems in the world, IBM is aiming to turn the world's most challenging problems into valuable opportunities. IBM Quantum System 1 is already in strategic partner locations in Germany and Japan, with more on the way in the United States, South Korea, and Quebec, Canada. With our strategic partners, we aim to build national quantum ecosystems, develop workforces, and accelerate R&D on a national and global scale. Quantum physics, which evolved in the early 20th century, is so powerful and yet so unlike anything previously known that even its creators struggle to comprehend it fully. Quantum computers are approaching the limit of classical simulation, therefore it's critical to keep track of progress and ask how difficult they are to mimic. This is a captivating scientific problem. Quantum computing is driving a new generation of scientists, including physicists, engineers, and computer scientists, to profoundly alter the information technology landscape. Let's keep the momentum going if you're already pushing the limits of quantum computing. Come join the community if you are new to the field. Run your first program on a real quantum computer right now. To understand clearly, let's move to history a bit. 
A traditional computer with 1 trillion operations per second would take roughly 300 trillion years to break the widely used RSA 2048-bit encryption. We all feel extremely safe because it has been such a long time. With a modest 1 million operations per second, a quantum computer using Shor's algorithm might accomplish the same job in just 10 seconds. Quantum computers have this kind of power, 300 trillion years versus a fraction of a second. Another reason nation states invest so much money in the sector is that because it is so tough, any success will result in a long-term benefit. So where do quantum computers stand today and where do they intend to go? In 1994, Peter Shore developed an algorithm capable of effectively addressing cryptography issues that are difficult to answer on classical computers, the vast majority of computers in use today. In fact, Shore's algorithm continues to jeopardize the foundations of most encryption systems in use across the world. The concern was that there was no quantum computer insight in 1994. The first miniature quantum computer was constructed in 1997, but it wasn't until 2007 that D-Wave, a Canadian business, announced its 28-qubit quantum computer. Quantum computers are evolving at a rapid pace, similar to non-quantum communication, which took more than a century from discovery to widespread use. Today, a number of players are competing to create the first powerful quantum computer. Commercial corporations like IonQ, Rigetti, IBM, Google, Alibaba, Microsoft, and Intel are among them, while nearly every major nation-state is investing billions of dollars in quantum computing research and development. Quantum computers are extremely powerful, but they are also extremely difficult to create, so whoever cracks the code will have a long-term competitive advantage. This is something that cannot be overstated. Here's a great example of quantum computing's capability. Given the enormous obstacles to developing quantum computers, I'd say we're basically where we were with classical computers in the 1970s. We have quantum computers, but they are still unreliable in comparison to today's standards. They're known as NISQ devices, which stands for Noisy Intermediate Scale Quantum Devices. They're noisy because they're terrible, and they're intermediate scale because they only have a few qubits. They do, however, work. There are a few publicly accessible quantum computers that anyone can program. IBM, Rigetti, Google, and IonQ all allow public access to genuine quantum computing hardware via open source technologies. IBM even offers a quantum computer that can be installed in your own data center, the IBM Q System 1. The 1970 comparison date works from a different perspective as well. In the month of October, we are also working on a quantum communication system that sends quantum states that quantum computers can understand rather than bits and bytes. This is necessary in order to create a quantum version of the internet. Because the quantum channel gives some intrinsic physical assurances about transmission, it's also useful for encrypting communication. Without getting into great detail, there is a fundamental feature that makes the simple act of wiretapping or listening into a transmission detectable to the people involved. Not because of clever system architecture, but because of the quantum channel's intrinsic features. Quantum computers, on the other hand, aren't merely for cryptography and communication. One of the most urgent uses is in machine learning, where we are on the verge of achieving a quantum advantage, which means that a quantum algorithm will outperform any classical method. Quantum advantage for machine learning is expected to be attained within the next 6 to 12 months. Quantum computing has a plethora of near-term applications, including cryptography, machine learning, chemistry, optimization, communication, and many others. And this is only the beginning. Research is increasingly expanding into other fields. Google and NASA have recently declared quantum supremacy. This refers to a quantum computer's ability to execute jobs that a classical computer just cannot do in a reasonable amount of time. In 200 seconds, their quantum computer solved a problem that would have taken 10,000 years for the world's fastest supercomputer. Despite the fact that the problem answered has no practical value or repercussions, it illustrates the enormous potential of quantum computers and their ability to harness that potential in the coming years. A new era in which we can concentrate on developing quantum computers with practical applications. While this will take many years, it will be the new frontier in computation. 
That's all for today, everyone. What do you think about quantum computers? And what do you even think about future technologies being like? Do comment down in the comment section, and I hope you've enjoyed the content so far. Stay tuned for more, and please subscribe to the channel. Like, share, and comment if you haven't already. And don't forget to check for updates by pressing that bell button.